Kembo, kembo, kembo na ta Tanzambi ya manzulu. Kimfumu kia kujisa. May kingdom come and may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mbote, hallelujah. Nusiemi bandeko. Greetings to other Bento family all over the world. To the dispersed and outcasts of Isolele in the Eastern Western Hemisphere. May the spirit of Tatanzambi be with all of you wherever you are in this world. Hallelujah. So invite some people to join us right now. Hallelujah. We will uh, we will have uh, yeah, I think a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful teaching. Um that's eye opener once again, right? And um I hope you will enjoy this information and revelation. So today we do have an open mic. So I will be posting the link later. So anyone who wants to come in can just jump in and join into this conversation. All right. So first things first, if you just came in, like the video and share. Invite some uh, yeah, family members, friends to join us today in this live episode. <clears throat> in Geta, this, uh, yes, next week, this month, February, next week, we will have a powerful seminar, um, the, How to Defeat Witchcraft, right? With Dr. Luya Lu. So I'm inviting all of you to come and join us Yes, make sure to be there. Join us for this uh, powerful. Yes, it will be powerful. Yes, powerful uh, seminar with Dr. Luya Luca. Yes, so register if you haven't. You need to register and join us for this powerful event. How to defeat Witchcraft. I've posted the link in the chat so you can click on it and uh, register February 25 this month. It's on a Saturday, uh, 5 p.m. Central European time. Yes, 5 p.m. Central European time. Okay, now in this episode, we're going to discuss the bosom of Abraham. Yes, we're going to discuss the bosom of Abraham. What is it? What does it mean? What is the interpretation of it? And is it an African concept? Is it an African tradition? Or what? You know, what is it? So we're going to zoom in on this and uh, we will see that the bosom of Abraham is actually, yes, <laughs> okay. Now, uh, if you just joined us, make sure to like uh, the video and share, invite some of your family members and friends to join us. So we're going to do some readings. Yes, and afterward I will place, uh, I will share the link so you can join into the conversation yes, and share with us your perspective and your thoughts. Ingeta. So let me share my screen. Okay, I think you can all see my screen. All right. So, Abraham's bosom. Let's do some reading. Heaven is defined. I hope you can all uh, read along. Heaven is defined as the place where God dwells. 
Geographically, we think of it as being up above, beyond the heaven that we see. The one in which birds and airplanes fly. The place where God dwells is even beyond the heavens in which the sun, moon, and stars exist. Now, I'm just reading from uh, reasonsforhopejesus.com. Yes, you can. It's nothing special. So the place where God dwells is even beyond the heaven in which the sun, moon, and stars exist. God's dwelling place is considered to be the highest of heavens. The heavens of heavens, and it's referred to in the Bible as the third heaven. So basically, heaven is biblically not the bosom of Abraham. Yes, according to the Bible, heaven, uh, yes, when we think on heaven, the abode of the Most High, yes, there are, um, of course, several aspects of it, the abode of the Most High, you can also be in heaven where you just are experiencing the presence of the Most High, and the presence of the Most High can be everywhere, Yes, like the psalmist said, where can I flee or where can I hide from your presence? Wherever I go, your presence will be there. You will find me. Now, where was Abraham's bosom? According to this website, Abraham's bosom was located below the heavens and in the depths of the earth. Jesus referred to it as the heart of the earth. Yes, in the book of Matthew. 12 14 and it was the abode of the righteous dead prior to Jesus resurrection and ascension and so what we see in the old testament abraham's bosom is called sheol yes sheol and it was the abode of the dead when people died they went to sheol in the new testament It's exactly the same. It did not change. When people died, they went to Sheol. But after the resurrection of the biblical Jesus, what happened? Sheol uh, moved to heaven. Okay, This is according to Christian theology and understanding of what took place. So in the Old Testament, they will go to Sheol, which is beneath the earth. In the New Testament, it remains unchanged, the same until the biblical Jesus died and resurrected and Sheol the righteous people who were in Sheol were translated to heaven. Yes, to, you know, where the Most High dwells and lives in heaven. Okay. Now, Abraham's bosom was a place of comfort and a place of waiting. The sins of Old Testament saints were remitted by the Levitical system of atonement using the blood of animals. All right. Now let's jump here, the other place. Since the time of Jesus' ascension, there now only remains the place of torment within the earth. Yes? We call this place hell. Christian, they call it hell, which is a translation of the Hebrew word Sheol. Now, Sheol, that's not right. Sheol does not translate to hell. Yes, that's nonsense. Sheol does not translate to hell. Sheol is the place where the dead go, according to Hebrew beliefs. Sheol is the place of the dead. Yes, both righteous and unrighteous. They will die and go to Sheol. 
All right, now let's take this one here. In the Holy Bible, the expression, the bosom of Abraham is found only in two verses. In, in the Gospel of Luke, it got, occurs in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the imaginary of which is plainly drawn from the popular representation of the unseen world. Yes, the unseen world of whom the dead. Okay, so Sheol is the unseen world of the dead which were current in our Lord's time. According to the Jewish conception of that day, the souls of the dead were gathered into the general tearing place, the Sheol of the Old Testament literature and the Hades of the New Testament writings. Yes, very important. So what we understand is that Sheol was actually the abode, the place where the where spirits of the dead will go. Yes, that was called Sheol. Now let's jump to this over here. Oh. Let's enlarge. Now oh, Sheol, it connotes. This is from the Jewish Encyclopedia. Yes, online Jewish Encyclopedia. It connotes the place where those that had died were believed to be congregated. Yes, to be congregated, to be gathered. Okay. Jacob, you refusing to be comforted at the supposed death of Joseph exclaims, I shall go down, yes, I shall go down to my son, a mourner unto Sheol. So what he's saying is I will go down with grief to the abode of the deceased, to the abode of the dead. I will go down in grief, yes, to meet my son, in Sheol, in the afterlife, the abode of the dead. Now, Sheol, look at this, she, Sheol is underneath the earth, okay? Underneath the earth. Now, in Sheol, you had two compartments, yes? There were two compartments in Sheol. If you read the story of uh, the poor Lazarus, right, and the and the rich, unrighteous man. Both of them died and found themselves in Sheol, the one in Abraham's bosom, right? And the other in a, in a place of torment. Because according to the Jewish literature, when one dies, he enters into the world below. Yes, it is all over the Bible. You enter into the world below, which was called Shohol, which means the world, the unseen world below the earth. And in that unseen world below the earth, there were two compartments. The compartments of the righteous people, which had, which had a, a water running through it, right? a rudder of life, a river of life running through the compartments of the righteous, which was called the bosom of Abraham uh, by uh, the Gospel of Luke. And you also had a compartment where the unrighteous soul would go. And it was a desert, yeah, a desert-like place. Yes. Uh, a place of torment, a place of lacking where you have nothing. Yes place which is comparable as a desert or you know a place of fire a place of the you know uh, unrighteous soul will go and be imprisoned and tormented by hunger by thirst 
by nakedness, you know, and by uh, demonic spirits. Yes, and it was also a prison. Okay, mm, let's see. Now, Shehol, it is said, it is very deep, right? And it marks the point at the greatest possible distance from heaven. Now, I don't, that will be a physical thing because in spiritual realm, the spiritual dimension, there is no such thing as distance. You can just think on a Bhopal location and you will be there. Yes, it is instant transmissions, instant transportation. You think on it and you're there. So there is not really this distance. Now, the dead descend down. Yes, the dead descend or are made to go down into it. The revived ascend or are brought and lifted up from it. So you have those who descend and those who ascend. It reminds me also of the story of uh, uh, Jacob, right? Now, sometimes the living are hurled into Sheol before they will naturally have been called by it. Now, it's very important to understand this, yes, because it will come back. Sometimes the living are hurled into Sheol before they will naturally have been claimed by it. It means that you died prematurely because of evil practices, yes, evil deeds of people. You died in a mysterious way, you know, you died by witchcraft, you died because someone poisoned you, whatever, yes? So sometimes the living are hurled into shell before they will naturally have been claimed. So your days were not fulfilled, you died prematurely. In which case, the earth is described as opening her mouth, that is, in judgment, right? Because you can also die prematurely because of a judgment. Sheol is spoken of as a land. Yes, so Sheol is a land. It's amazing, right? Why am I stressing this? You will understand why, why I am stressing this. You will understand. Later. Now, Sheol is spoken of as a land, but originally it is a place with gates. Yeah, so it's a land and a place with gates. And it seems to have been viewed as divided into compartments. Yeah, so it was divided into compartments. You had a place where righteous people would go, yes, a place of uh, yeah, that looks like a well-watered and maintained garden, yes, with a river of life running through it, a river of life running through it, and another place of total, um, yeah, chaos, you know, wantings, hunger, thirst, nakedness torture, whatever. <clears throat> okay, one beneath the other. So, one beneath the other. Now, it, here the dead meet. Yes, the, the Bible verses are all there. Okay? So you can verify everything. Here, the dead meet without distinction of rank or condition. The rich and the poor, the pious and the wicked, the old and the young, the master and the slave, 
if the descri uh, if the description in Job three refers refers as most likely likely it does to Sheol. Yeah, so that is to say that everyone will face death. It doesn't matter your rank. You know, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you're pious, you know, righteous or wicked. It doesn't matter if you're young and old. It doesn't matter if you are a mass or a slave. Everyone in a certain time will face death. You will die. Okay? You will die one day. Hmm. Okay, now, uh, do I have anything else? Remember the days of old. We are uh, advised, consider the years of many generations as thy father and he will show thee the elders, and they will tell thee. Now, we need to go back to the belief of our ancestors. And what you will see is that the beliefs of our ancestors are actually not that different to what we have been reading just now. Yes? So you will think like, you know, people think that we Bantu were just pagans and we didn't have any relation with God. We didn't have any revelation of God. You know, we didn't have any knowledge of God and that the missionaries came to teach us everything concerning God and true religion. But... Everything we have been reading thus far is actually found in African tradition. Okay? It is there in African tradition. Everything we just read. So, are you telling me that before the missionaries came, Nabi? that the Bantu Negroes had the knowledge of villages, right? A land beneath the earth, the abode of the dead beneath the earth, the separation of departments of the righteous and the wicked where they go beneath the earth. Are you telling me, Nabi? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Everything we read, is in accordance with the beliefs and spiritual understanding of our ancestors. Therefore, they did not teach us the knowledge of the Most High. They did never teach us anything about Nzambi Apungutulendo, Baba Mungu, Ngai, Murungu. Mulungu. They didn't teach us anything about the revelation of God. What they did, they brought to you a foreign religion and a foreign system of worship to enslave you. You understand? And as they were beating your ancestors into spiritual submission... They gave you a European name, and they told you a myth as they killed all the knowledgeable, you know, priests, elders, and they forbade anyone to teach the children the ways of the Bankulu, okay? Now, what we have read thus far tells us that the dead have a designate place where they go. That place is beneath the earth. 
which is called Sheol in the Hebrew, biblical Hebrew language, yeah? Sheol. And when a person dies, there are two departments beneath the earth where they go. One is the department of the righteous, the other is the department of the wicked. In the department of the righteous beneath the earth where dead spirits go, we are told that they enter into the bosom of Abraham. They enter into a atmosphere that is likened into, unto a paradise, yes, with trees, uh, mountains, rivers, of living waters, etc., and those who go to the other department uh, of, yeah, you know, of imprisonment, where they experience thirst, hunger, uh, nakedness, you know, uh, imprisonment and torture, is a place, is a desolate place. Yes, it's uh, likened unto a desert and likened unto a place of fire place of chaos, of disorder. <clears throat> um, and all this is found among Bantu Negro tradition, right? You think, oh no, it's Bible, it's, you know, it's Hebrew. No, it's found among Bantu Negro tradition before the European Christians ever came to Africa to colonize the Bantu and the Africans before, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now let me reshare my screen and let's do some reading. Continue our reading. Now, this is from a book called entitled Elements of Negro Religion from early, what was it? 1500, 1522. Yes. If the old Negro ritual of Europe be compared with that of the modern system of spirit classification among the Negroes, it will be found that the letter is probably not identical with that of the 5,000 years ago. The grades recognized today, however, may be supposed to include two grades of ancestors, good and bad, okay? Now, who are the ancestors? The ancestors are those who have died as righteous men. Yes, those who have died as righteous spirits. Yes, when people die, there are two designations. There are people who die as good spirits. There are also people who die as bad spirits. Okay, so we have good and bad. The old gods of the land, good and bad, demon spirits in nature whose proper functions are imperfectly understood, such as the uh, Umkuvu, Hili, Inkanti, and Lozi Kanzana, as familiar spirit of the sorcerers, which whistled rather than talk. The art demons proper, such as the devil, the fire spirit. So uh, the Bantu people consider the devil the fire spirit, okay? the fire spirit and snake spirits, guardian spirits or angels. And above them, it's, it's giving us uh, the ranking of spirits, okay, at this moment. So we have the fire spirit, the snake spirit, the guardian spirit of angels, and above them, archangels corresponding to the opposite rank of arch demons, such are approximately the different social grades in the unseen, but nine in all having at the head the person of Jehovah, 
whose upper sphere is perfection absolute. Okay? So Jehovah, who is in Zion beyond Pungu, this European writing about the Bantu, as he has observed, calls the Most High, he compares the Most High of the Bantu with Jehovah. That's why he uses uh, the name Jehovah. So actually in Zambia, Pungu, uh, if you are from Congo, you know, uh, in Gai, if you are in Kenya, uh, Murungu, Mulungu, but we say in Zambia, Pungu. Little is known as to how demons reach the earth, but Negro tradition traditions on what authority it is impossible to say, support the truth. Now look at this, the truth of Christ's statement that the arc fiant uh, Fulcan or Shita, which is Satan, Shita, Satan, the fire spirit, fell as lightning from heaven and brought about the fall of man. Okay, let me highlight that. Okay, let me highlight that. So this European writer says that the Negro tradition, according to his findings and research, as he spent time among the Negroes, the Bantu, he says that the Negro traditions um, on what authority it's possibly to, impossible to say, but support the truth of Christ's statement that the arch fiant Fulcan or she, she, Shita, right, which is Shatan, the fire spirit, fell as lightning from heaven and brought about the fall of man. You see, so... The biblical story of the fall of the fire spirit, yes, and being responsible for the fall of man, you will say it's biblical, it's biblical. But according to this writer, it's a bent to tradition. <laughs> so do you see? So which one came first? Which one is older? The bent to tradition, the traditions of the Africans or the European Bible, yes? So which one is older? And this fire serpent, we are said here, it was he who tempted woman to sin in order to ruin her posterity, body and soul. Now let's look into uh, another one. It is Bantu beliefs and magic. Yes, also written by a European. Okay. European. Now, this time, this European finds himself in Kenya. Yes, among the Bantu in Kenya, East Africa. From 1922. Okay, we'll go down. Now, let's read this highlighted portion here. Finally, I must express my indebtedness to Professor Robertson Smith's illuminating work on the religion of the Shemites and to Campbell Thompson's book on Semitic magic. I have referred to this from time to time as they throw light upon the principles underlining many of the African ceremony, ceremonies which I describe. It's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. In respect of religion, the author again and again notes the remarkable similarities which may be traced between East African and Semitic beliefs and rites. And he rise, rise, that, rises the question, 
how these similarities are to be explained. How do you explain the similarities between the Old Testament writings and the Bantu traditions, okay? It's a dilemma. How do you explain it? So the, the European were already dealing with this centuries ago, okay? Now, we in the awakening thing that we, many people say we're just making things up. But centuries ago, yes, in the late 18th century, now, no, later, even later, since uh, the 1500s, they were writing stuff down. Yes, like the book that we read before this was from, I think, 1522. Yes, they were writing things down. And Pigafetta wrote a whole book on Congo, the Kingdom of Congo, yeah, and also um, uh, mentioning the, the, the books of magic which the Congo people had, right, in Loango. They write about it. Since the 1500. <laughs> okay. So how to explain the semantic beliefs and rights amongst the Bantu, which are very similar, yes, very similar with the things we read in scripture. How to explain? It's a dilemma. Are they due to parallel? Yes. Independent development in the African and the semantic race, races? Or are they the consequence of the invasion of Africa, either by a Semitic people or at all events by a people imbued with the principles of Semitic religion? In my book, Folklore in the Old Testament, I had been similarly struck by some of these resemblances. And while abstaining from speculation on their origin, had remarked that the hypothesis of derivation from a common source was not to be lightly rejected. On the other hand, Mr. Hobley thinks it safer in the present state of our knowledge to assume that the resemblances in question have arisen independently to the parallel development in the African and Semitic areas. He dismisses as highly improbable, yes, as highly improbable the idea that the ancient Semitic beliefs should have originated in East Africa and spread from there to Arabia. Do you get it? Yes? Yet recent investigations in this part of Africa, particularly with regard to the native veins of iron and gold, tend in the opinion of some competent inquirers to show East Central Africa, East Central Africa, including the region of the Great Lake, which are all the territories of the ancient kingdom empire of Congo, okay, was an extremely ancient seat of a rudimentary yeah, so the foundational civilization, the, the, the birthplace of civiliz civilization, the seed of which may have been carried rather by migration or the contact of peoples to remote parts of Europe and Asia. In regard to iron, which has been uh, brought in Central Africa from time immemorial, Mr. Hobley quotes Professor Gregory, who thinks it prob, prob, probable, what is it? Probable that the art of the forging the metal 
who has invented in tropical Africa at a date before Europe had attained to the discovery and manufacture of bronze. Now he continues. He even suggests that the ingenious myth who first fused tin and copper into bronze may have borrowed the hint from the process of working iron, which he had learned where? In Africa. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, Kembo, Kembo, not a Tanzania Manzulu. Okay. Now, uh, let me share the link uh, with you all. For those, you know, who want to come in. So what is our topic today? What are we discussing? We're talking about the bosom of Abraham. What does it mean? We read in the Jewish Esculpedia, we read about the Christian theology and explanation of Sheol, yeah, which is the bosom of Abraham. The difference between heaven as the abode of the supreme being and Sheol being the, the land of the deceased. Yes, the land of the deceased. So I showed you that. Um, and I also went and read from old books. One of them entitled Ben to Believe in Magic. To show you what the European were writing about our ancestors, yes, informing us that everything we read in our foundation laying, as we were placing the foundation for our teaching, what we read in the Jewish Encyclopedia, or we read about um, the Christian. Um, interpretation eh, and, and, and teaching of the bosom of Abraham. The Jewish Escopedia told us that the Sheol is the place where the deceased go. Yes, the spirit of the dead go to Sheol, which is beneath the earth. They go there. They have a life there in Sheol. You continue life in Sheol. Yeah, which is the abode of the dead. It's a land. Yes, it's a country. It's a land of the disease where you go, you continue your life. You know, you have good times. It's, uh, there is, it's a place of garden. Uh, you have water, you have food, you have everything there. Yes, but there are two departments. You have the departments of the righteous, the pious ones, you have the, right, the department of the wicked ones. We have explained, okay? Now, let, let us continue and let's go back. Okay, now look at this. The ancestral spirits the belief in the fatality the belief in the fatality of the ancestral spirit is very strong among both the Kikuyu and the Kamba peoples. The former called them Ngoma and the latter Aimu, Aimu, singular Imu. <clears throat> so, the A being a prefix to denote plurality. So, singular, it's Imu. The Akamba declared that the life bread, Ngo, 
<laughs> go from Congo and also from the leopard Ngo. So the live bread, which is called Ngo, becomes the Imu. In the Hebrew, you have the Ruach and the Nefesh, right? The Ruach being the breath of life, the Nefesh being the spirit of man, which descends to the grave, into the grave, into the village beneath the ground, the spiritual unseen world beneath the earth. Curiously enough, the disembodied spirit was called Edi Edimu by the Assyrians. Yes, now, very similar with Imu. Yes, so the Assyrians called it Edimu, according to R.C. Thompson in Semitic Magic. And I also believe that the soul could return to the earth and that ghosts were responsible for many body ills. Hmm. Now, Jesus tells us, for example, that illnesses, if you read the New Testament, were caused by who? Evil spirits. Yes? Think. Under or Ordinary circumstances, when a person died and was duly buried, his soul entered the underworld. Oh, really? Mm, you see, now everything that we discussed earlier will begin to come back. Yes, that's why I gave you the Jewish thought. As we read from the Jewish encyclopedia, I gave you the Christian uh, thought, right? According to the theology and teaching, both of them saying that in the old days, when people died, they went on the ground. There was a village of the dead beneath the earth, the unseen world beneath the earth. Okay. It was a land. It was a village. It was a town, a great city. Everyone will go there. And as you went down, there were departments of the righteous and of the what? Wicked. This is all seen and understood by our ancestors in our ancient tradition. That's why I always say the European didn't teach us anything. They just gave our ancestors by the whip and by the sword and through the gun, a religious system Yes, to enslave us spiritually, mentally, physically, and to steal all the resources of our land. Yes. That was the purpose of them coming with the gospel. It was never to teach you about God. It was never to elevate you, Muntu. It was to put you down, to enslave you mentally, spiritually, spiritually, physically, all right? And therefore they gave you that religion and the book, they enslaved you. So they never came to teach us anything our ancestor didn't know. Our ancestor knew all of it. So when they were coming and telling their stories, our ancestor was saying, from, hey, we know that. You know, we know those principles. We know because we have the revelation of the Most High, the revelation of the Divine. We know. So Christianity, um, as they were teaching their theology, our ancestors were understanding those concepts because they knew it. Yes, they knew it. And that was one of the reasons some of them were so easily to baptize themselves because they they deemed it as a, a, a sort of initiation to enable them to go even higher above what they knew already. Yes. But the missionaries and the Christians, you know, the Europeans came as wolf in sheep clothing. We were deceived. Our ancestors were deceived big time. Yes. 
big time. They received a foreign religion and lost everything. Yes. So under ordinary circumstances, when a person died and was duly buried, his soul entered the underworld, the house of darkness, the seat of the god Irkala. I don't know who that is. The house from which none come forth again. This, this seemed to correspond to the shoal of the Hebrews. See? The shoal of the Hebrews. The Assyrian word edimu, the root of which is imu, imu being a, a Bantu word, is practically identical with the Kamba word for the same conception. But there is no evidence to show that identity is anything but accidental. The belief in the ancestral spirit is merely a form of the belief in a soul, with the difference that the present day religions of the civilized world, Christian world, will not admit that the spirits of the departed could interfere with the life of men. The spirit of the departed could not interfere with the life of men. We still find traces of this belief in Europe, you see? So even in Europe, they have traces of this belief. In the feast of all souls and in curious ceremonies, which take place in some countries, on St. John's Eve. Now, beloved, you know that in within the Catholic traditions, they have a feast day which they call the Day of the Dead, right? It's a Catholic feast day. Why? Yes? Why? Why? It's an ancient tradition which originated from Africa, spread all over the world, because we were migrating and teaching as we went. Yes, we were migrating and teaching, and people were adopting our culture, our traditions. So even in Europe, were Negroes, Bantu, yes? And they also influence the Mundele who were living in those places. <clears throat> okay. Now, by the way, once again, the link is there. If you want to join into this conversation, jump in. Okay. We're talking about the bosom of Abraham. What does it mean? Okay. Talking about the bosom of Abraham. What does it mean? And I hope you find this a very interesting topic. Yeah, because many of you are afraid to talk about these kind of things. Right? You are afraid. You want us to talk about uh, some different things. History. Tell us about how we are the Bantu. Tell us about how we are the, you know, the true Hebrew Israelite. This is part of it. That's why we read. Let me go back. Yeah, the Jewish Encyclopedia. Talking about Shehol. Yeah, here. Shehol. It connotes the place where those that had died were believed to congregate. Okay? What's this? Okay. Congregate. Important. Yeah, so those who died congregate in Shehol. They are received, they come together in Shehol. Who receives them? Yes, who receives them in on the world? They call Shehol. We call it Pemba Kalunga. Yes, Pemba. Um. 
Right. Okay. Um, eight. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in good old age and an old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. You see the word gathered? It's the same word here as congregate. Okay, it's the same word here as congregate. So Abraham died and was received by his people. Yes, he was received by his people. Where? In Pemba Kalunga, who the, in the Hebrew Bible, it's called Shehol, it's Pemba Kalunga. In the New Testament, it's called the bosom of Abraham. It's not talking about the abode of the Most High, you know, the perfect place where the most holy spirits live, yes, and surround the throne. Of the one who sits upon it. No. But Abraham's bosom. Yes. Where the children of the light are gathered. Where the righteous children are gathered. The Hebrews called it Sheol. In the Christian New Testament, it's called the bosom of Abraham. Our ancestors called it Pemba Kalunga. King Genocide, Mbote. Hey, Mbote, um, greetings and salutes to you, Brother Kiefer. Um, great discussion and topic as always. Um, I, I kind of joined in a little bit late because I was just getting off of work, but just wanted to join in, you know, make the uh, sisters a panel going, you know, and just basically listen and learn instead of questioning anything. But if I do have a question on something I don't understand, I uh, I ask you about it. But um, um, so she um, so a lot of people don't know about that. They think about the interpretation of like hell or people go to heaven. So she all this would be a question for you. Is that like a waiting place before people go to heaven or hell? Or yeah, good question. Yeah. So Sheol, according to Christian theology, yes, and according to Jewish theology and literature, Sheol is the place where the dead are gathered. Yes, and in Sheol you had two departments. Departments where the righteous people go, yeah, which in the New Testament is called the bosom of Abraham, and the department where the wicked people will go. That's a place where you experience thirst, hunger, nakedness, you know, imprisonment, torture, and etc. In the place of the righteous, you know, department of the righteous, you had a living, you know, it's like a land, it's like a village, it's a country. Yes, you had trees, you know, you had how you have houses, you have a, a stream of waters flowing through it. Yes, and you live there. So it's described as a land, as a, as, as, as a, as a dwelling place. Yes. Now, in the New Testament, when Jesus died and resurrected, the story was changed. Yes. Now we are told that Sheol, the righteous place where the people were living in Sheol, was emptied and they were all translated to heaven. I've, I've okay. heard something like that. I've, I've heard something like, um, it's been a minute ago, but I did hear something like that. But now I keep, keep breaking that down. I like that. Um, so, so basically, not only was it a gathering place like a community for like people to go into different departments, which would be um, good exactly or, or positive or negative. Then when, when Jesus Christ comes to play in the New Testament, they retire to say because he, he died and because mm -hmm. of sacrifice that everybody else is saved. So automatically they're taking everybody from out of there. So um, 
So is that true or not true? And I, I, I'm not. I, I want. I don't know because this is this is new information to me, and I love new information. I, I try to pass it on to people so they can do their research and stuff. And, you know. Yes. So break that now, down. according to our traditions, mm -hmm. okay, people can go into the most holy place, which is exactly. Uh, in the presence of the Most High, standing and surrounding his throne. Okay? Yes. That's possible. There is a judge who sits upon the throne. But traditionally, he will go to the village of the ancestors. I will show you. I will show you all. And that village is the land which the Bible calls in the New Testament, the book of Luke, Pemba Kalunga. Yes, Pemba Kalunga. To go to heaven, you must become uh, complete. Yeah? You must become, as a spiritual being, complete. Yes, complete. Now, that's, that is a topic that we need to discuss another time. But he was, he was gonna bring that five seconds. you know how we was... Uh... Well, with God giving us our, our clothes, I believe that's when we was given flesh, and we were the, the spiritual beings that you were talking about. But yeah, that's for another day. Uh, <laughs> keep going. Mm -hmm. When you read, for example, in the book of Hebrew, Hebrew twelve talks about the spirit of righteous man made perfect. Yeah, so there is a state of perfection that each spirit, each moon to soul has to reach. Yes. And um, our brother Fasting's life says, for example, what is resurrection when the circle of life is life and death and rebirth? It's a good question, see? Because how do you reach perfection? What is um, the cycle of life or the circle of life. The circle of life is seen in the Congo cross, yes, which shows us, it gives us four stages, four stages of life. Birth, growth, maturity, yes, uh, seniorship, so you become elder and death. Those are four stages of life you undergo. And when you come, yes, when you put on flesh and you come to this earth, you are coming to fulfill a mission and to grow and develop spiritually. You understand? When you fail, to growing and to reach a certain spiritual level which is required of you, you will come back and redo. You understand? So you have that. But you also have spirits who have reached a certain high, um, a certain perfection in the spiritual realm. And they choose to come back to be teachers, to be instructors, yes, to be leaders, and to help the people evolve spiritually. That's according to our tradition. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah. uh, reincarnation, it's not a law. But it's, uh, uh, how do you say that? Oh, my goodness. I lost the word. It's not a law, but it's an exception. Okay? It's not a law. It's not to say that everyone will come back. No. Reincarnation is not a law, but an exception. Those who fail big time will return to do over until you learn the lesson, the spiritual lesson you have to learn. Yes. 
yeah. but that is our tradition, okay? And uh, Keith is like um, reincarnation and resurrection are two different things, just like um, um, evil and negative are two different things. And people tend to, um, you know, um, over, I, I do that, I overlook them. But there's, then that's why I like the, um, the um, breakdowns y'all be getting. Like um, when you had Dr. Lil Luca um, on your panel, he, he actually broke it down from the words. And y'all taught me the words and what they meant so I could get a, a deeper understanding of the teaching. I appreciate that because a lot of um, some teachers don't do that. And, and they're not doing it on purpose, but, you know, what you call it, lambs, you got to fill, uh, feed meat, uh, milk to the, um, you know, to the sheep. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate it. And I know I know it's a little stressful. I know you want to you want to get down to the sometimes the core um, teaches that people need to get to, but sometimes it helps to make them learn like manual. You go from first gear to second, you know, and rub it up for them. You see what I'm saying? But um, keep, keep going, keep us. I appreciate you, bro. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. There, there are nine, nine levels. Yeah, some say seven, others say nine. Yeah, but let me put them all together. So they are like seven or nine levels mm -hmm. hmm? of. Oh spheres of existence yes now i believe personally based on my understanding that when you die the way you go depends on where you are spiritually yes where you are spiritually now according to the tradition of our ancestors everyone who died will go through the village of the ancestors and it is also seen in the book of, uh, let me reshare my screen, uh, by the way. And, uh, here. Okay. And it is uh, also seen in the Bible several times and uh, through several scriptures. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old, an old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. Now, to be gathered is, first of all, to be buried, and second, literally to be received by your family members, by your direct uh, relatives in the beyond, yes, in the beyond. So there is a, a homecoming for you, and as they stood, stand and await for you to, you know, to cross over, they receive you. So, when you die, based on our, the tradition of our ancestors, you will go normally to the village of the ancestors where you are received. Okay? Now let me, uh, let us open up and look into this word, word gathered. Okay? Gathered is the word asaf. In Hebrew, asaf, uh, the definition to gather, receive, yes, to gather in, to gather, collect, to gather an individual into company of others. Yes, so as you are buried, you are received into the company of those who went before you. So you are received in the company where? in Pemba Kalunga, yes, in the, in the hereafter, in the world beyond. Now, I said something, no, wait, before I go there, to gather and to take away, here, to assemble, to gather, yes, to be gathered to one's fathers who are ancestors, etc. Mm, to be brought or into association with others. See, so it's talking about a fellowship being a gathered, yes, being congregated into the company of others. So Abraham, when he died, he was gathered into the company of his people, his ancestors. All right. 
Yes, that's this first. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Now, tradition tells us that there are seven, other say nine realms. Yes, those are nine realms of existence. As you are going up, you are going higher into the rank until you reach the perfect level, which is the habitation of the Most High. Yes, so seven heavens, seven realms, or nine realms. It depends what you want to uh, adopt. But I would just mention both of them. Where you go depends on the glory, yes, and the light which your soul carries, which you have accumulated in your walk upon the earth, yes, in your relationship with the Most High, in your, you know, righteousness and the deeds, whatever you, you did upon this earth, yes, it fortifies the quality of your soul. You accumulate more light, more glory. So depending on the quality of your spirit, your soul, it will determine where you go when you die. Yes. In which of those seven or nine spheres of existence you will live. Now, when we're talking about Sheol, when we're talking about the abode of the deceased, listen, heaven and hell, heaven, you know, the abode of the Most High and uh, the abode of the ancestors are not far away from each other. <laughs> yes? Because when we talk and think spiritually, nothing is truly far away. Heaven is right here. Yes. The presence of the Most High is right here. Yes. It's not far away. Distance only matters for physical beings. Yeah? But for spiritual beings, a distance is just a thought away. It's just a thought away. That was nice. Hey, that was powerful, brother Kephas. Hey, hey, I felt that. Like when he said that, like, no bull, like people, we can look up and this is the third, everybody who looks up is outwards, but it's more inwards than outwards, even though it's out of this with this realm, but it's still in this realm through us at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's separate, um, like the yin and the yang. It's, it's it's a part of the same thing, but they are separate, but they're still in the same thing. And I think that's what that's trying to describe. Mm -hmm. To a certain yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. You, yes. you, got, you got that right, Keepers? Thanks, thanks. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, spirits never die, okay? Uh, our ancestors made that very clear. We also read about it. Spirits cannot die because you are spirit being. Yes, you are a child of the Most High. The Most High is spirit. And you as a manifestation of the Most High, you are also spirit. Therefore, you cannot die. Only this physical body, yes, this spiritual envelope can die. But your spirit lives and continues life in the beyond. You continue to grow, you continue to develop. They you say energy. life is about progress, about change. They, they say energy, it never, it never lead, it never gets deleted, it always transferred to something. So what we think of our spirit is which the electrodes we get a, a million of them in our brain, right? And going through our nervous system, that means that's our spirit because once a person passes, that that energy goes from out of that body, but it still transfers to somewhere. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you see, um, you are a living consciousness, okay? So the life that you are experiencing here on earth, you are experiencing it as a conscious being, yes? So 
when you entered into this world, you download your consciousness spirit was downloaded into this vessel. You get it? So your consciousness yes. is your operating system that allows you to control this body. So when this body, this system becomes old, yes, and it dies, that consciousness, that living consciousness, spirit comes out of it, yes, and is and returns to its source. So you are received by your ancestors and they will, you know, ask you about your experience. You will share your experience. You will talk about it. If you're righteous, you will be received. If you are a wicked person, they won't receive you. They will say, ah, you know, go away. You are full of stench. We don't want you here. You are a wicked person. Yes. And yeah, that, that's a teaching on itself because I don't want to go too deep into it because I will then have to explain a bunch of things that I don't really want to go to get into it today mm -hmm. because I, I, I want to read the last portions of our discussion today. Uh, by the way, a fasting is life. You know, the link is there. If you want to join us, you're welcome. Uh, let me repost yeah, it's, those it's, who... It's better. it's better instead of um texting, it's better to um just join the live stream because a text message um when you're texting, it can be interpreted different, even if you mean good because you're trying to mm -hmm. put down a lot of information, and that can happen. What you call mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, sometimes the yeah. spirit of debate comes in of um, loss in translation. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not yeah, that the yeah. words ain't down wrong. It's just you could say no or you could say no, and then it, it sounds different. But when it's text, you can't, you can't, you can't see that. <laughs> you ever keep it? That's why I tell people like when he teaching, if you don't read the text, like, look. If you got a powerful teacher, don't even read the comments, especially if it's a negative one. You feel me? Or if you deem it to be that one, but I don't think that's what it is. But you get what I'm saying? Just, just a rule of thumb. You feel me? I hear you. Okay. Now, in our band tradition, we are told those who die, they go to Pemba Kalunga, which is the equivalent of the Hebrew Sheol. Yes, and in the New Testament, the bosom of Abraham. But we are also told that some people were taken up and they were seen, you know, going up into the sky and disappeared. And so we have those two traditions in our Bantu culture. Yes. So you have those who will go just like Abraham were received by their holy ancestors, their people, as we have read in Genesis 25, verse 8. But we have also stories of people who were taken up into the sky, into the heavens, and disappeared. See, exactly what we read and encounter in the Bible itself. We have both of those stories among us from our ancestors so which one came first the european bible of the or the african traditions what do you think in genocide oh um i was um well i was a little busy um just uh run it back to me um just briefly I guess. oh you're not listening right no, no, I was listening. No, I was listening. I had, I, I'm, look, I'm a little busy. You know, I just got off work, but no, I'm here. I'm look, um, just briefly ask a question. Now, I'll go in. I, I'll do it. Yeah. Hmm. Now I said, which came first, the European Bible or the African traditions? Oh yeah, we had oral 
historians. We had oral. No, we still to this day have oral historians. And I listen to them. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you know my ass on that one. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, people, um, look. You see, Aziza, I don't know if you've been listening, but that's not what we said. Yeah, that's okay? not what we said, but that's what that's people be saying. That's not what I said, not even close to it. So I don't know how you all be listening. That's not no, what we said. That's, that's a question. That's a question. Well, yes, be, but a question, you, see you don't ball, need to ball, ask the question if you have listened. Okay, but no, I will okay. answer your let me, question. Let me, let me help you out with that one, right? So sometimes in our churches and our broken teachings, people say stuff like that. And that's why I think that, that a question was being posed, not to be it, but you know what I'm saying? That's easy for you to break down. So, you know, so go ahead and break, you give them some. Yeah, Aziza, I've asked, I've answered that question several times just in this live episode, right? I've answered several times. I ex explained it um, also several times. But to do you a favor, I will do again. Traditionally, the Hebrew Sheol does not mean hell. Okay? You can ask any rabbi. You can... No, I will do you better. Um... I will go there again. Here, this is the Jewish Encyclopedia. Okay, pay attention now, eh? It's the Jewish Encyclopedia. As you can see, Sheol on the left top, Sheol. Now, it is synonymous with the pit. Yes, synonymous with the pit. And the pit is called Tehom in the Hebrew tongue. Tehom, okay? which uh, is translated as the deep. Yes, you read this in Genesis 1. When they say, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters of the deep. That's the word to home. Now that word to home, the deep, also alludes to the dwelling place of spirits. Yes. Yes. And it is the place where Job went to when he died. It's a water, a place of waters beneath mountains. Yes. Now, you, <clears throat> the Bible, people think they have read the Bible. You haven't read the Bible. Not really. You read translations. Translations. It connotes the place where those that had died were believed to be congregated. Yes. Just to repeat. Congregated. It's the same thing we have seen in Genesis 25. Yes, when they say Abraham died and he was gathered to his people. Was Abraham righteous or was he wicked? Because he went to Sheol. Yes, he went to the world beneath, the unseen world beneath the earth. Was he righteous or was he wicked? He was righteous, right? So Sheol is not just a place where, you know, it's, it's, you, you cannot just say Sheol is hell, is the pit. No, no, no. It was the world of the dead divided in two departments. The departments of the righteous, departments of the wicked, separated by a huge cloth. Yes. So wherever you were, you were not able to cross it. You were not able. To cross. Yeah, that's it. Um, okay. Now, 
we're going to read something. I hope you are ready for this. Because <laughs> this one is uh, this one is crazy. Okay. <laughs> and I know, so, so, uh, yeah. Some people will start writing comments. Quit after you start reading this one. <laughs> yeah. Now, what we're going to read now, you know, be ready for a roller coaster. Okay. Be ready for a roller coaster because it is, it confirms everything we have been reading from the Jewish Encyclopedia eh, and um, from the biblical text, what we read yeah, about the bosom of Abraham, yes, and uh, she all, you know, whatever. <clears throat> let, let us go there. Now, this is from the works. This is a book, yes, from the works of Joseph van Wing, who was a Belgian missionary missionary in the Congo. Yes. In the Congo. Um, let me go up. Well, uh, what, what time? Um, around what time? The year? 19... 38. Okay. okay. Let's see. 1938. See, look, I'm more important. I keep it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yes. 1938. From Joseph Van Ving. Okay. Let's go to chapter. No. My goodness, what chapter was it? Chapter, okay. Chapter three, yes, the village of the ancestors. Now, we have seen that the Hebrews said about Shaol, they said, it's a village, it's a land, yes? It's a land of the deceased. Uh, can we go there? Because I think that's one. Let me see. Hmm. I don't know if I, if I can find it very quick. Now, here you read about the compartments, right? It's divided in two compartments. Here. Um, okay, that's matter. I can't find it right now. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Yes, the village of the ancestors confirms everything. This will confirm everything we read, we discussed about the Jews, what they say about Christian teachings, right? About the underworld and etc. Gata di Bakulu is old Kikongo, which means the village of the ancestors. The deceased have their village like the living. When a dying Ganga priest leaves his Nkisi to his successor, his spiritual power, son or nephew, as the case may be, he says to him, um, okay, you take care of the inhabitants above. I will treat those from below. In the village, the ancestors have the houses and the fields. They have great wealth. Fabrics, silver, game, palm wine. This village is located in Kumasa, in the waters, and the other side of the forest, because the forest is found near rivers. Okay, now, when you study what the Hebrews, now, let me say, what, what the Jewish people say about Sheol, you will learn that the departments of Sheol, where the righteous people would go, was a village, it was a land, right? It had water, forest, houses, exactly what you're reading here. Yes. Exactema, what you're reading here. Each village of the living has its, has its corresponding village of ancestors. Located somewhere, we don't know where, on the land 
of the clan, ancestors and masters and owners of the earth and the water of the forest and the bush with all the animals that live there and the wine palms that grow there. And the they water. also own the land for cultivation and gives abundant harvest if they deign to allow it. Keep if this, a native this, wants right. to okay, cut okay. down... It says, it says in the water, right? So that means we were seafaring people. I ain't mean to cut you off. Look, Kivas, you see that? Where you get a highlight? It says in the water, meaning we were seafaring people. You feel me? Where you at? Okay, what well, um, where you get highlighted? This oh, place is located in Kumasa. In, in Kumasa. The, in the in the water. Yep. That part. No. That part. That no, shit went over people's head. No, 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 no. Kumasa oh, yeah. represents the holy yes. abode of the ancestors. Okay? Oh, That's Kumasa. It's, water. it's the water. Yes. Oh, thank it's you. Symbolized, it's symbolized by water because water is a symbol of purity. And just sure. like, uh, okay, just like um, air and water and outer space is almost the same thing, but it goes to the fifth and sixth and seventh. Yeah, but to to those dimensions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now let's continue. Um, where we at? Yeah, here. If a native wants to cut down and set fire to an ancient forest to establish a field for cassava or mice, he will first ascertain the disposition of the ancestors by a small test called Kifu di Kila. He will go in broad daylight into the forest and clear a very small area. He will only work for an hour or two, then return to the village. If at night he has strange dreams and in the morning he feels tired, it is because the ancestors do not want this part of their forest to be touched. But if he has good dreams and wakes up refreshed, it is because the ancestors are favorable to his business. Nice. The that ancestors I'm... are called Nkulu. Yes. The ancestors are called Nkulu, plural Bankulu. And to make it more complete, Bankulu Balongo, which de uh, designates the holy ancestors. Yes. Plural. 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 Yeah. Yes, plural. The man who has lived honestly according to the laws and customs of the elders, whether he dies eaten, <laughs> killed by the Ndoki, or called by Nzambi, becomes Nkulu. Yes, ancestor. Now, keep that in mind, okay? Because it corresponds with what something that we read earlier. <clears throat> Here. Yes. Sometimes the living, and this is from the Jewish encyclopedia, sometimes the living are hurled into Sheol before they will naturally have been claimed by it. Yes, it can be. So you died prematurely. Yes, it can be through judgment. It can be through uh, curses. It can be through witchcraft. Yes, that you die prematurely. So it's the same what we see here. Yes, when you die as eaten, it means that you have died by evil ways. Yes. To die by evil way. And taken by Nzambi you know, or called by Nzambi means that your time came, you know, you fulfilled the days which was given to you and you are called back. Yeah, called back to the um to the creator. Look, yeah, I like that one. Like in my interpretation, am I right, Keepers? Like that means hey, look, the, hey, it's time for you to come back to serve me. Yes. You finished <laughs> your mission. You know, you've done what you had to do. Your days are up. And then you are called back. 
Now, as the snake changes its skin, so it gets rid of its mortal envelope, which is the body, yes? And leaves it in the grave. So you leave your body in the grave, but your soul goes beyond the grave. Your spirit goes beyond the grave. It goes where the ancestors preceded it below the earth. Now, what is below the earth? The Jews called it Shehol. Yes, the Greek called it Hades. But it all comes from African concept. Because we, the Africans, we taught them. It's not the other way around. Yes, the African traditions are older than the European traditions. And the European faiths, the Arabic faiths, are older. It is the mother, okay? It's the foundation. Now, it goes where the ancestors preceded it below the earth, which is called Pemba, near the water, because water represents life. Yes, life. This is the common belief expressed in unusual formulas. The Bankulu, whether they are the Bankulu, whether they are old people, men, women, or children, take on a white body. That's interesting. Yes, they take a white body because they become illuminated spirits of light. Yes, they become illuminated spirits of light. Each, however, retains his personality, you see? So in the beyond, according to our traditions of the ancestors, you will not automatically be transformed into a completely other personality. You understand? You, you, you are still, you are still be almost You're still you. Law. You are so still be you. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, let me so, say this. Look, it, it's funny. It's funny you say that because I'm, 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 I'm reading it, right? It says, look, take on a white body. So that's the spirit body. Look, before this sentence, the body illuminates spirits of light. Yeah, the illuminates. Yeah, of course. And that's when it comes into the stars. It says he who can number the stars can number. Yeah, look, it, it's so, so much things and mysteries, but I like that. Keep going. Yes. So. You retain your personality, yes? You retain your personality. So when you die, you will not automatically, you know, magically become a different personality. If you're wicked during this life, you will be wicked in the beyond. You will go there as a wicked person. If you are lying, you know, homemonger, murderous person, hateful person, guess what? You die with that personality. You die with that character. So you will continue to, to express that character in the beyond. That's why you will be rejected or received based on your personality, who you were, what you have done in this world. You understand? You will be judged. You will be judged. Keep, uh, keep, keep breaking this down. However, retains his personality, his rank. Oh, 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 it says in his rank. Wow, you hear that? Look, in both <laughs> yeah. it was, it actually says that. However, yeah. he retains his personality, his rank, his taste, and his occupations. Like, mm -hmm. you see, he's good at doing. I, 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 I apologize for cursing, but the things he was good at doing. He still doing it. So if you were a criminal and a killer, you will want to continue with that practice. So you become an evil spirit. You understand? You become evil spirit. However, um, manufacturers, quarrelsome, impious, the butched and doki are not admitted. Where you see, this is similar with uh, Revelation 
Um, let us go there. Twenty-two, I think, right? Twenty-two, not twenty-one. Now look at this, okay, let's read. And he showed me a pure river of water, yes, of life, clear as crystal. You see, so in the presence, in the beyond, in Pemba Kalunga is water. And our ancestors always used water to denote the abode of the ancestors. Now, the throne of God is always represented, situated above a stream of waters. That water can be flowing, but in, in some scriptures, it's also crystallized water, where the throne of the Most High is, you know, situated. It's always the same. And it correlates with the traditions of our ancestors. Once again, showing you and demonstrating that our ancestors knew about the Most High. Yes, they had the revelations of the divine and they taught the Europeans what they know. Not the other way around. Okay. I, 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 I had an um, experience with the Most High before. Like, I was a young kid, like around like seven years old, right? And I was laying down in my room and I had a whole bunch of experience where I was asking God, like, it was like a dream, right? And then when I popped out of the bed, my brother was there and then he was like, wow, what happened? Like, and it was an awesome experience, you know, to say the like, least, yeah. Mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> okay, look at this. He that is unjust, you right? You know what Revelation 22 deals with um, the coming judgment but also the life after this life, okay? So, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy. So you see here, a ranking. Don't try, don't try, don't try to change. Hold on, let me say this. Keep it. I don't want to cut you off, but let's see if we agree. And, and, and if I say it first, you can't say that I agree with what you said, right? So check this out. You gotta let those people be. Come again? You gotta let those people be. The world gonna be the world. The world yeah. will be. The, <laughs> I ain't the saying world, like. I don't want to say yeah. like. Yeah, the I understand what you say. I understand Thank what you, you say. But by, by, by me saying that, you understood that. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you yeah. say. Yes. So they, we see he ranking. Yes, for sinners and for righteous men. So you have unjust, filthy. Yes, you have the unjust and you have the filthy. And you have the righteous and you have the holy. You understand? So, for the sinners, there are two, uh, two rankings. You are unjust or you're filthy. For the righteous, we have righteousness, righteous people, and holy people. Yes, two rankings, two qualifications. <clears throat> so even in the beyond, you will be who you are. Look at this. Um, 
Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The city. Now, what was Pembakalunga called? It was called the city of village. Yes, village. Gata. Gata. Di Bankulu. Yes, the village or city. Now, Gata also resembles gate. And, and, Ke and Kivas, let me explain this to you. You remember in the movie Black Panther? We ain't got to show none of that, but everybody remembers this, right? And then when he spoke to his father, and then the other dude spoke to his father, they was in that they was in that village, and they came from the trees, and he spoke to you know. It's a, <laughs> but, hey, look but, at this! Hey, <laughs> look at this, uh, brother. William Long says this sounds like sinners are doomed to be sinners. No, everybody. Why can we respond to this? It's hold on, hold on. clearly. Let me, let me, allow, allow me to do this. Give me five seconds. Okay, we go ahead. All, hold on. We are all sinners, but we strive for excellence. We strive to make the family of the earth better and everything beyond and before <laughs> and after it. That's what we do. That's that's it. You take okay. the answer, you, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me do it like this. Ye the light of the world. You're good. Hey, look, hey, look, you felt that. You felt it. No, that's how you got to do You got to get thick skin. You got to be able to do it like that. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that's I, why. I, I hear you. Hey, look, I, I go through, look, I work many different jobs personally with people, and people have attitudes, emotions, and lot, a whole bunch of stuff. But um, I don't let it right. I, I know I'm better than it. You feel me? I know that there's a higher thing that's better than me that rise in all of us, and we all are tapped into it. And just when they're doing it, some you, you can't. I, like judge a book by a cover, but I start reading. I, I I like to read books. You feel me? <laughs> I like to read books. Ain't that reading is good? You know. All right. So now, that, now that I show you how to look, that's how you got to do it. If you feel like it's a comma or some, if you can break it down, break it down. If not, you just ignore it. Don't. And then not all the times it's like that. You feel me? It's not always like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Now listen, um, people. Yes? If you die a sinner, guess what? You will remain with that character and with that personality. Okay? Remember the story of the poor Lazarus and the rich man. You know that story, right? He was eating off his table. Yes, you will retain your character. So if you are a robber, a killer, a murderer, a liar, you will want to fulfill those desires. Yes? So if you die with a wicked personality, you enter into the beyond with that filthiness. Yes. If you are a filthy person, you will be filthy in the grave and beyond the grave. If you are an unrighteous person, you will be unrighteous beyond the grave. Yes. That's the way it is. Where? Do you have to change and better yourself now as you are alive? This is the moment to better yourself. Beyond the grave, it's only the judgment. How you live today and how you conduct yourself today will determine where you will be in the beyond. Okay? So the choice is up to you. Like it is written, blessed. A day that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter to the city of the living, to the city of Yahya, Isaiah, to the cities of the Bankulu Balongo. 
Hey, Kivas, Kivas, I got, I got, I got an, um, I got an off topic for you, but it's the Bible, all right? King James version, right? Mm -hmm. All right, check this out. You, you ready for this one? Of course, because, of course. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because people do look, look. I, I had a coworker take me home, and I was like, look, because I looked it up myself. I was like, damn. All right, so you know how this Bible scripture, right? And it says God's a jealous God. Did you know this mm -hmm. sentence before? It says his name is Jealous. Mm. And look, and his name is, look, look, it says his name is Jealous and he is a jealous God. Did you ever see that one? Is that a typo or what does that mean? What is the deeper meaning? Look, 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 let's break some shit down. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that, that, it's really, look, look at the King, King James Version and it says that. Oh, yeah, I know. I know the first. I know, I know, I know. I, I apologize for um, Chris. But look, but look, check it out. Hey, check it out, though. That's that that look. That's one of them controversial ones. You feel me? Yeah. How can God be a jealous God? No, no, no. Right? It says no. It's a typo. I believe it's a typo. It says it's a typo. What does it no, mean? What's the interpretation? Oh no, hold on, I'll share it. No, go go to I think look, go to um the Bible scripture where it says his name is it says his name is jealous. Okay, right? give me the first. Okay, God is a jealous guy, right? That you heard that, right? There's a Bible verse where it says that, right? Yeah, I know. Because, I know. No, no, but go to it. Look, look, go to it. But right before it says his name is jealous. Right before I say, and he is a jealous guy. Yeah, jealous. but what is your interpretation? No, I don't. I want to hear your interpretation. I mean, you I want know, to hear my interpretation? Yeah, but I'm just saying, I don't. I don't know what that means. But I just know it's a, maybe it's a typo. But that's you know Easter eggs, you feel or whatever. Yeah, but you know, I don't so want to go into that because that's uh, not our topic. We'll deviate. All right, my bad. You right. Yeah, we are discussing yeah, something. Uh, <laughs> hey, but look, hey, look, put that, jot that down, jot that down. Look, that's yeah. just, that's we'll look, deviate that's... big time. That's not our topic. We'll deviate. Okay, somebody join in. Uh, William William Long. Are you there, William? Both here. Okay. All right. So heaven, Pemba Kalunga, right, is a place of water, always described as a place of water. The throne of the Most High surrounded by water. It's always water flowing from it, or the throne is situated on crystal sea. It's always the same scene. And so water represents the beyond Water represents purity. And when you die, you will maintain your personality, your character. So you will take your character with you in the beyond. Remember that we said that you are a conscious being. Yes, conscious being. And life is a conscious experience. So when you die, your body die, but your spirit, the conscious spirit, you know, entity, being as you are, will just enter into the spiritual world once again. Yes, and everything that you have accumulated, the personality that you have built, you know, your character which you have developed through everything you did, everything you went through, to your whole mindset and whatever, you will retain it. You will not change suddenly, you know. You will not be from. You will not become. Uh, you will not go from a devil to the most holy person in the beyond. No, that's not the case. The Bible never teach that. Our ancestors also never taught that. Um, it's nowhere to be found. Formally, okay. Let's continue. Formally. When someone committed a sumu, sumu means sin. 
So our ancestors already had a concept of sin before the European Christianaries, uh, missionaries came to teach us anything. Now, salvation has nothing to do okay, with you believing in Jesus and therefore your soul is saved because you receive Jesus, right? White Jesus, the Christian Jesus, which they present. C.J. Bourget, the second um, son of the um, 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 C.J. Bourget. Look, look, look. And then most black people, like, even white people, like they've been taking that white Jesus out of there. Uh, and it's the difference. And then what about graven images? Oh, hey, William, you need to use Chrome. Yes. Okay? If you want to come here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why is there an echo? Oh yeah. Well, you um, you need to turn off the other one. Keep it on stream yard, but then um, cancel the other one. Take them down. Take down. Because it's like where you're watching. Just anything. Now salvation has nothing to do. Okay. You know. Fix it first. And uh, you can come in. So what we were saying, yes, yeah, sumu, right? Sin. That concept existed with our ancestors. It was not introduced by European missionaries. No, we knew about the consequences of sin. We knew that sin was against the commandments, which were called Congo. The commandments of God were also called Congo. Yes. So we had the commandments, we had the traditions of our ancestors. And the true Hebrew people of the book are followers of the traditions of their fathers. Yes, that, that describes the Bantu. We are followers of the traditions and beliefs of the fathers, which they received from the Most High. Yes, from the angel. Maleki Makongo. That's it. So formally, when someone committed a sin, sumu, such as adultery or insulting very serious towards the parents, the old people said to him, a sentence in Kikongo, you, you commit these sins one day where we are going, you will not be wanted. Okay, you will not be wanted. Okay, uh, let's go back. <clears throat> now, blessed are they that do this, his commandment, the commandments of the ancestors, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without, for without, so outside are the dogs. And sorcerers, yes, whoremongers, murderers, it's the, same, it's the same thing. You see that? Idolater, saying the or same insulted thing. very serious towards the parents. Exactly. The old people so, said, damn, damn. Look, I appreciate you reading. Look, hey, look, you break it down. Look, it's true. Is that not is that what they speak of now? Yeah, William Mbote. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hear we you. can hear you. Yes. Um, do you yes, have a camera or something? Was about. Do you have a camera? Oh, uh, yeah. It's not, it's not working right now. It's not working. Why are you hiding? No. No, I just I just had a question for right now because I'm not I'm not uh I'm not uh okay pose your question right hold up hold up compose your question yeah I, the the same one I put in the chat what about redemption when it comes to traditional religion because you're saying you die whatever you are and and stuff like that but what about intercession for the dead and praying for the dead I had a relative that died and I used to have terrible dreams about him in a bad place after he died. 
And uh, I prayed and prayed and prayed, and I started having dreams about him in a beautiful place. So mm -hmm. okay, can I can I can I do that one, Kivas? Yeah, go ahead. If you, go ahead. No, no bullshit. You you appreciate what it's going for. So um. No, can keep this because I want to hear because you know, I watch him well, a lot. Well, now, well, William, like, William, hey, William. I, I appreciate what you just said because I, I get this one up. No bullshit. So um, not this Thanksgiving, but the Thanksgiving before it, right? My mom was passing, right? And um, she she went to God, right? And I want to go bring the turkey home, and she won't dare. But uh, look, I can talk about it, but I get too emotional. You feel me? And um, um, I had three, at least three different dreams where she was in that dream. And now I get out the testimony. Yeah, since she had um uh, went to God. Yeah, and um, it was all good. But she was like in a build. She was like in a, a house or like a building. But and when you went inside, it was like it was a whole bunch of stairs. Every time I end that, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I get that shit. I look. I get. I look. I, no bullshit. I actually had that shit. Every since. I had three, at least three different dreams with some shit like that. You feel me? Hey, look, look. Let, let, let me answer this question, okay? Let me answer this question. Your question is legit. Yeah. It's also a very good question. Now, ancestors have the saying, by asking questions, everyone gets wiser. Okay? So by you asking this question, Everyone will get wiser from it. When you die, you will still be you, okay? You will maintain your own character, your own personality. You will still be you, okay? But if you are in a bad place, those who are alive can actually help you to come out of that bad place and to be transitioned into a better place where you continue life in the beyond, okay? And it is not strange because we see it in the Bible, yes? In the Bible, we are told, for example, that when Jesus went to the underworld, right, to the world of the dead, he also went to the prison houses, you know, the, the, the spiritual prison where spirits were imprisoned, and he liberated them. And this thing there, what happened there, is not just to say that only Jesus can liberate people, you know, because uh, in Christianity they have put too too much emphasis on Jesus and certain things no one can experience, no one can do, but Jesus. But actually, in our Bent tradition, it's a normal thing, and you also see this. Exact same tradition among the Catholic Church who pray for the dead, right? It is there, but that is something apart. That's something different. Your salvation, right? You are responsible for your own salvation. And that's why Apostle Paul said, work out your own salvation in the Bible. Salvation cannot come by someone else taking your responsibility upon themselves. Only you are responsible for your own deeds. You are responsible for, the, for your own salvation. Now, what is true salvation? True salvation is actually you working out your restoration, okay, from being in a fallen, fallen state as God 
in regaining once again your God position and status. That is true salvation. It's the restoration, working to your restoration of once again becoming a perfect spirit, a complete being. That's because why you read in the book of Hebrew that the spirit of those who achieved perfection were standing on the mountain with the archangels, yes, with the firstborns. Nice. That's the reason. So Christianity fooled you all. It fooled us by just saying, just believe in Jesus and you're good. But the reality is you believing in, 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 in a good man, believing in a prophet, believing in, you know, Isaiah Congo, it's good. Yeah, it's a black you man. It's a black man. responsible for your salvation. Yes. In Ezekiel 18, you will read, for example, the soul that sinned, it, that soul will die. But the soul that repents, that soul will live because your righteousness is on you as a person. You cannot transfer your righteousness to another person. You can't, you can't, look, <laughs> the righteousness of a person always going to prevail over anything. Yes. The righteousness yes. there. I like that. You understand, uh, William? Are you still there, William? Do you understand? Yes, yes. I, I get quite a bit from that. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So when you get a revelation, you see a family member, you know, in the beyond, and he ask you for, to pray for them. Pray for them. You know, pray for them so that they can come out whatever they are in and go to a better place. That's possible. That's to tradition. You know, it's no thing. It's not wicked. It's not demonic. Christians have demonized everything African, but they practice it still. Yes. The Catholics do You got a spell word, so they spell cast, and they went into our Congo over 10 million, and we honor the um, Holocaust and to the Jewish people also. Yeah, no, yeah. Yes. Now, let me ask you this question, people. Did Jesus ever save anyone? No. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Did he hey, ever save anyone? Hey, Keevers, you want this one? Check this one out, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> Answer my question. Oh, good. Answer my question. Did Jesus ever save anyone? Yeah, he saved us from the time of, uh, they, they go through that dumb shit and we listen to him. No. When people came to him, he always said, your faith has saved you. Your oh. faith made you whole. Your faith healed you. Yes? So you are responsible. You. Like, when I teach, when I minister... Re re hearing what I say and you know and, and, and connecting it with your faith can heal you, can save you, can deliver you. Yes, but it yeah. comes from yourself. Yeah, yeah, look, but that, it's you know, just, word. the so, kingdom of God look, is therefore also in you. Yes, look, it's, it's not it's not external, it's in you. You have the greatness in you. You have the whole universe, the whole of Nzambi in you. Yes. So when you look inward and you drive out, then you have salvation. Because salvation is the restoration of, of you going from the fallen state to a restored state of being a complete muntu, a complete manifestation a complete image, manifest image of the creator. Hallelujah. Yes. So oh, uh, I will have to close, you know. We are two hours in. I want to go and take my rest. Um, thank you all for being here. Do you have another question maybe, William, before I close?
Okay. I don't think so. All right, people. Matondo. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if you enjoyed it. I don't know if no, you're no, confused. No, I don't you know. Broke you, know. Down, you broke it down, and then I'm a little bit tired, and I'm um, off my leisure time, so I apologize. So, um, keep us if you listen to everything Kiva said and just ignore me. I appreciate y'all. I apologize. Hey, I love y'all a lot. Hey, but I did point out some good questions and stuff. You feel me? And then I'll begin my close argument. Hey, look, come on, come on, Nanzizami, Yamazulu. Oh. <laughs> Yo, man, you're funny. Okay, Matundo, Bena Congo, Benan Zambi. May the Most High bless you all. May He protect you. May He uh, shower you with grace and blessings and favor. May the holy angels surround you and keep you safe in all your journeys. Remember, this coming Saturday, no, next week, 25 February, we will have a seminar with Dr. Luya Luca. Register today and save your spot, okay? We will have a special seminar with Dr. Luya Luca. The theme is Defeating Witchcraft. How can you defeat witchcraft according to the divine principles, right? The divine principles of Nzama Pongu, according to the divine principles of our holy ancestors. So are you curious? Do you want to receive this knowledge, these keys, yes, these divine keys that will help you in your, you know, daily life, in your spiritual struggles, or whatever you are encountering, it will help you, definitely. So I'm inviting you today, come join us, be there. It will be powerful. Yes, it will be powerful. So make sure to come, make sure to be there. Okay, all right? Um, Let me see. Give me a moment. Let me put the link for all of you in the, in the chat. And also check out my Patreon page, okay? Check out my Patreon page and join the Patreon family. Special shout out to my Patreon members, partners, who are supporting the ministry and making things happen. I thank you for your support. So special shout out to all of my Patreon supporters, my Patreon partners in Geta. May Tatanzambe bless you. I am Nabi Kefas. See you next time. And uh, may Congo reign. Kembo. Nanzambe Ampungutulendo. I hope I didn't mess you up. I know what we discussed was quite heavy. Yes, I know. It was quite heavy. Uh, join my samba classes okay if you are interested email me my uh, email is on my page on youtube page go to the about me you will find my email address over there so if you're interested in learning more and going even deeper join my sabbath class join bsi okay for those of you who want to uh, join. Yes. <laughs> look, look at this. Yes, you did. Yes, I know, I know. I know, you know, but as we are breaking down those shackles, those, those lies of Christianity, 
right? We need these teachings. We need this truth to come out so you can begin to understand that we will lie to and the rebel holes goes very deep. Okay, people? So that's why I always lay foundation before we go deep. So if you rewatch this uh, teaching, you will have the foundation which I shared previously before we went into the deep. Okay, so we watch it and you will understand it a bit more. Yeah, so bless you all. Campbell, Mekongo Rain, see you next time. Ingeta.